So Angelina Jolie Pitt, thank you so much for talking to Newsround. We've got these kids with us today and they've got some questions for you. They've each got a question, if that's okay. Okay. So we'll start with Maram. What's your question for Angelina? Um, so as we all know, you've visited many uh, refugee camps over the years. Can you tell us what life is like in these camps? The thing that I think would shock you the most is now the average stay in a refugee camp is about 20 years. So that means if you were born in a refugee camp, your whole childhood is in a camp. It's on borrowed land. You often can't farm on it. You don't have the right to farm on it. You don't have the right to kind of make it your own. You have a little plot. You have a number. And you get your food once a month. And you only get what they give you. You don't get special spices or little things that make it personal, like when your mom cooks at home and stuff like that. And, um, and Sometimes you have school, a lot of times there aren't funds for school, or especially secondary, so your education is very limited. So a lot of times little kids are kind of sitting there with nothing to do, and it can feel a little bit like a prison sometimes. It can feel pretty, pretty tough. But I'm always amazed by, by the, um, the attitude of the refugees because they're pretty strong people, so they try to make the best of it. Fatima, you've got a question, haven't you? Um, my question is, how does migration affect us all in terms of schools and hospitals being full? Um, well, I think, you know, of course, when there's an influx of people, it does, it will always affect schools and hospitals. But they tend to find that if, you know, they hope that the war won't go on forever, that it'll be for a few years. And for those few years, they're going to have to be very, very generous. And they're going to be affected. But it is something, uh, maybe there's something more important than you could possibly learn from any textbook, you know, which is that you learn to share and, and learn how to help someone when they're in a situation where they could die if they were sent home. So, We've spoken to some kids in the past, especially in the last 12 months, where they said that perhaps in their area they think that Britain's full or potentially their parents might struggle to find a job. Do you think that they have the right to be worried? Well, I think, I think with or without migration, that's, that's a lot of countries feel that way. A lot of countries and people around the world feel that they, you know, the fight to make sure that there's employment and there's, you know, that is, that is in general the way. The but way bringing in refugees, do you think that could be um, kind of adding to the problem a little bit? I don't think, I will. I think there are some people that would really like to make you feel like your life would be completely different because a refugee family came in and they took your job, but that is not... I do not believe that is the case. I, I'm somebody who believes that that uh, immigration can make a country stronger. I mean, look at the diversity sitting on this bench, right? How boring would it be if everybody was exactly the same from the same country? So diversity is a wonderful thing. Um, I think the kind of jobs that that uh, a new person, a refugee, or, uh, an asylum seeker may get is not necessarily the job that many people want to have, and and. Uh, they tend to take any menial job they can um, to be able to just get by. But I don't think they're going to jump forward and take the job that somebody who's been living here for a while. And I think that there do need to be protections for people who have worked a long time in this country. And, and they shouldn't ever um, be put second to somebody who's newly arrived. I think it's very important that you take care of your citizens and are able to give support to people in need. How are we going so far, guys? The nerves have gone? Yeah. We're feeling good? I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> You're still nervous. Um, well, great start. Gabriel, you've got a question for Angelina. What is it? Um, how can we make sure that these people aren't labelled as refugees? I mean, they're people like us, really. Well, I think, I think part of the thing is, it's strange, isn't it, that, you know, different, somebody from another culture, another, another country, and so, should be so interesting. Um, and these are people that survived. Maybe they survived bombs dropping in their neighborhood. Then they survived, you know, uh, not being able to find food. They survived. Some of their family members were taken from them. They, some, some of them had to cross and some of the family members drowned at sea. They have survived so many things. We don't want to disrespect them and treat them as different, but maybe the answer is to say that they are different in a wonderful way and they are survivors and they are uh, people that we should be proud to get to know. Faisal, what's your question? Uh, you're less selfish than other celebrities. <laughs> uh, what <laughs> what makes you focus more on 
more time on re refugees than yourself? Well, that's a great question. It's very sweet of you. I felt, you know, when I was growing up, I j went through so many. I didn't know what to do with my life. I didn't know how, what it was to be happy. When you can be a part of something in the world, um, then you're, it's a happier life. So I feel very lucky that I um, was I became aware of this young, and um, and then you know, I'm, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I am is a mom. And that's the greatest thing for me in the world, and uh, and then I'm just I'm a person who lives in this world and wants to wants to do some good. I hope before it's all over for me. So that's my <laughs> <laughs> great question. Okay, to see what's yours. Um, I'm 12 years old and I go to a school in London. What can I do to help uh, refugee children in our school? Well, I think. I think the most important thing is to is to talk to them and to be friends with them and to ask them questions about how they're doing. You know, basically, however, if it was you, what would you want? You know, you put yourself in their shoes and you kind of, you know, do, do what you would wish would be done to you and learn about them because I bet it's fascinating how they got here and where they're from and I bet you made some great friends. Do you think countries feel pressurized into letting refugees and migrants in? They, they act and they speak about it as a big pressure. Um, but I don't think it's the kind of pressure that some countries face when they've had four million refugees for 25 years. You know, it's a different kind of pressure and I don't think they should equate themselves as if it's the same. Um, and again, I think it's, it's, you know, it was set up this way after World War II to help balance the world when people are in need we need to do what we can. Sometimes that's taking people in, sometimes that's giving aid relief, and the, sometimes that's helping to support another host country, but you have to do something. And really, you should want to do something because a stable world is what we all need and want. So the pressure should be that we don't want the world to break apart and be, be full of chaos and instability. The, the, that's the pressure we should feel. We should feel that we all better do something to try to just make the world a more peaceful, stable place. Uh, whatever that is, whatever our countries can do, they should do, right? Happy with the answer there? Yeah. How do you explain what's going on right now to your children? Because they obviously live very different lives to the children in the refugee camps. Do they understand what's going on? They see their mum out there, but how, how do you explain this current crisis? Well, my kids have been, I mean, my, my kids are maybe more aware because I don't, we don't live in, you know, we, ha we have a place, we, we live in Hollywood, but we also travel around the world a lot when we work. And my kids have been to refugee camps and they've also spent, we just spent four months in Cambodia working and, and um, living there. And, and uh, they've had the good fortune to be able to live in all parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And um, my, so they've, and they have started to travel with me into the field. Um, and they're very, uh, and they're very interested. I've never pushed them because I never want to like make them do it. I waited, and they asked. And so far, Pax and Shiloh have really been wanting to go. Um, and they read a lot about it, so they want to know. So when mommy goes somewhere, they kind of read a little bit about it, and then often, which is quite cute, my little ones give me like, like Vivian will give me a blanket and tell me I have to find someone to give it to. So I'm carrying around this blanket that mm. I have to find someone. So have you actually you know. given some of your belongings to Oh, of refugees? course. They always, they always fill my bag with random things that they don't, you know, it's, it's, it's odd things. Sometimes they're very practical about what they put in my bag. The older they get now, they understand, you know, what makes sense to give people. But then sometimes I've had to, I've had to travel and deliver some of the weirdest things. <laughs> like what? Just, just, you know, some odd stuffed animal or some weird you know, toy that something. I kind of just don't, you know, but, uh, but it's, but kids between kids and kids, you know, when I brought Shiloh with me to Lebanon, she, she brought a, this kind of circus stick and, you know, for all my talking and for all my everything, all the kids just wanted to go out and play with the circus stick. So it's, it's true what they say about, uh, you know, an hour of play is worth more than years of conversation. So right. kids, kids connect much faster than us adults. What do you think of these questions so far? Oh, they're brilliant. They're brilliant. We should do more, more of this together. This, is my, this has been my favorite interview of the day. You know, it was wonderful. You also, you also missed a whole other interview before the camera started rolling. Yeah, exactly. Which will be it's our secret. Crucial question. <laughs>